I'm back with some updates on the 3011 build. Um, I finally got a magazine in. I went with one of these 28 round drum mags. These are just a uh, little cheap, I think it said they were made in Korea. Mag, they were on sale for $51. About the same price as buying three eight round mags and I don't have to reload. So my mag release button is still a little tight. I mentioned in the last video that I had some uh, little droop on the overhang and I filed some of it off. I, I apparently didn't get enough of it because I have to push the mag button in to load it. Now the other issue I'm having, let's see if I can get some focus here. All right, so when my slide goes forward, Sometimes it'll feed them, and sometimes All right, of course that one works every time, but the issue that I was having especially with jacketed hollow points is where the printed feed ramp is right in front of the mag the bullets are hitting nose first and pointing down instead of sliding up and I tried to smooth everything out with a little hand file just to get the layer lines out of it and the other issue I noticed I probably don't have enough light for you to see up in there Yeah, that's that's not going to show up so similar issue that I had with my uh, rock slide for the Glock 17 the bottom of this slide where it picks the shells up is tapered and a lot of the time especially with jacketed hollow points when it comes up to the back of the shell it doesn't hit flush with the back of the shell it's hitting just the top corner and the shell will tip down as it comes out of the magazine instead of pushing forward. That's the first time I've had all the shells go through the gun in one cycle without jamming up. So we'll load a couple more of them in here and, and see if we can get it to repeat the process. You can see on the end here, the bullet is catching on the tip of the barrel as it goes in and I took my Dremel and polishing wheel and cleaned it up a little bit with some uh, polishing compound and one thing that's nice about these drum mags is this little lever right here drops the bullets down in so you don't have to press on them or use a feeder or anything all right there we got one to fail so it sticks right into the printed portion of the feed ramp and the only good way I've really found to get them is to pull the slide back use my screwdriver to pry them up a little bit the second one doing it so we only had two fail that time and the first time I tested it I had loaded it to capacity and I had issues I didn't have anything cleaned up on it yet so I think what I'm going to end up having to do on this one is take the slide off of it, uh, weld that lip on the bottom, and then file it so it's square instead of being beveled around the, the edge. And I think that'll help. If that doesn't fix it, I'll end up plastic welding some material at the uh, where the cartridge and the magwell come together. I'll try to plastic weld some material up there to help feed the bullets up so they don't run straight into it but as far as the black oxide went 
I don't think it turned out too bad at all. Um, I do have some spots that are slightly darker in the middle from where I dipped the slide down in the jar. I should have just wrapped it in paper towels and laid it down. I do have some Renaissance wax on there, but with as much as I've handled it today, I think I've wiped a lot of it off and gotten some smudges and fingerprints on there. Charging handle turned out well. And I did a uh, just a real simple hand guard for the front of it. Something to hold on to so I don't have to have my hand right up here in the front. I can hold it out a little bit further like a carbine would be held. And then I have a little bit of an update for the bento box. So Justin Hates had contacted me about the issues that I was having. Um, he basically told me that I did not glue my barrel liner in correctly. And I filed the groove too deep for the extractor. And I more than likely did not have an out of battery discharge that caused my first one to come apart, but more than likely didn't have adequate chamber support for the shell. So what he was saying was that your barrel liner does not go flush with the end. It needs to be down in there a little bit, at which point you would just use this printed groove to kind of file at a taper just enough so that the extractor can grab the rim of the shell. Now, unfortunately, when I printed this one in clear and had issues with it, I filed everything. So none of these things are accurate measurements anymore. And I'm in the process of reprinting the front part of the chassis, and then I'll go back and reprint the upper receiver and all the small parts. That way I can just give everything a, a fair chance to cooperate with me. Because the issue I'm having now with none of these measurements being accurate anymore is I cannot put the cartridge flush with the plastic. I still have to put the barrel liner flush so that the cartridge sticks out a little bit. And I don't know if that's because these measurements are off since I filed everything or if it's because I'm using an all aftermarket parts and the dimensions are changed just a little bit. But if you go back to the other videos, you'll see that I had a, a groove cut in this barrel liner about three times the size of that one and it left a good portion of the side of the cartridge exposed. Fortunately, I didn't have anything glued in place when he contacted me, so I was able just to cut my barrel down a little bit more, do a slight bit of filing, and put it back together and test it. So we've got, I don't know, two or three days worth of printing left, and hopefully by then I can have both these finished up. I got all the parts replaced on the FGC9 that were broken. So I'm hoping that once we get everything done, I can do another range day video where we go over all the guns again and see if we can get less of them to break this time.